Very excited to welcome back to the program after almost a year at this point, congressional candidate for Massachusetts first district, Alex Morse. Welcome back to the damage report. Great. Thank you so much for having me back. Uh, it's good to have you here. Obviously, wish that, you know, the country was in uh, better shape right now. Um, but we uh, we talked a little bit about your race uh, back in July of last year. Um, probably quite a few people who are sort of catching on to what's going on in your race now. Uh, if people are tuning in here and they're not familiar with your history, what you're bringing to the race, why you're running, could you uh, catch them up? Yeah, absolutely. So I announced my campaign against Congressman Richard Neal uh, about 10 months ago, last July. And this is a race that has national implications, given that Richard Neal is currently the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, the guy that refused to request President Trump's tax returns, and right now the guy that is killing the Paycheck Guarantee Act in the House. And so this is one of the most important races in the country, because Richard Neal is a block to Medicare for All, to a Green New Deal, to getting money out of politics. And I was elected mayor of my hometown. I was 22 years old became the youngest and the first openly gay mayor of my hometown. I've been mayor nine years, I'm now 31 years old, and now we're just three and a half months away from the primary on September 1st. And with Biden as the presumptive nominee, it's more important now than ever before that we have more progressive champions in Congress and we invest in a younger, more progressive bench of Democrats to be the leaders of our party. You know, some of the, the things that you just pointed out um, about the not immediately requesting access to the taxes, which is a thing, by the way, that Democrats ran on in that cycle that was like, hey, get us into power and we'll be able to do this. Oh, wait, what were we talking about? I forgot. Um, yeah, uh, very difficult to understand. Um, what I'm curious about is, as you pointed out, with Biden as the presumptive nominee uh, and you going against this very well connected, powerful Democrat, um, in the best of times, you'd face a lot of pushback from within the party. I'm curious, considering the, what's going on right now, um, what has the reaction from the party been? Yeah, I mean, we have no no direct interaction with the party, and we're not going to let the party obviously stop us from running the best possible campaign uh, that we're running. I mean, here in the district, we have a lot of momentum. We're running to represent 87 cities and towns. We already have 25 times the amount of donors that live here in the district, and you know, unlike the congressman, as a mayor here the last several weeks, I've been in the trenches with small business owners and entrepreneurs and residents who are struggling to put food on the table, to get health care, wondering how they're going to pay their rent uh, or their next mortgage payment. And we need to really think about what type of member of Congress with what values and life experience do we want in Washington as we think about crafting a just recovery uh, from this pandemic and from this crisis. And Congressman Neal, time and time again, is... Uh, is motivated by his corporate donors. I mean, right now he takes more corporate PAC money than any member of the House, Democrat and even Republican. And he's more interested in working with Trump than actually holding him accountable. You know, you mentioned a just recovery and, and you talked about the fact that he was instrumental in blocking Representative uh, Jayapal's uh, the yeah. Paycheck Guarantee Program. Um, uh, so I'm curious, if you were if you were in the, the seat right now, the bill that was put forward just uh, less than a week ago, um, what, what do you make of it? What, what do you what do you think about what's in there? What do you think should have been added that wasn't? Yeah, there's there's a couple of good things in there, but this is a larger point about Democrats failing to use their leverage. Uh, they did the few first few pieces of legislation here. You know, no bill is going to go to President Trump's desk without going through the House, and we we need a united front of Democrats in the House of Representatives actually crafting a bill that bails out people and not corporations and. I would be um, hand in hand, arm in arm with uh, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal and other progressive members of Congress uh, demanding that the speaker include the Paycheck Guarantee Act uh, and include more stimulus to the American people. This is a no brainer. And for Democrats and Republicans to talk about, well, we need to find a way to pay for this. Uh, we're not paying for any of this. Uh, and, you know, as a proponent of modern monetary theory, this is important that we have the funds when we have the political will to actually make a difference in people's lives. And if we have money for the biggest corporations uh, to transfer trillions of dollars to the Fed to spend trillions of dollars on war and defense, we have money for college affordability to help people put food on the table, uh, to give people a paycheck when they're not having any money come in. And so uh, I wouldn't you know, close my eyes and let this bill go through without joining progressive colleagues to demand that it change. You know, I, I know it's obviously it's difficult for you to get a lot of like direct contact with your your current constituents, your potential future constituents. But I'm, but I'm curious to the extent that you've been able to 
get an impression from them. What do you think they are making of the response from government so far, from the Trump administration, but also the the, the counter proposals from the Democratic Party? Um, what, what do you think they're making of the situation that we're in right now? Yeah, people are people are hurting. It's a very uncertain time. People are scared, and they see a federal government, not just the president, but their member of Congress. You know, how is this relief? trickling down and helping just everyday people. I mean, you would never know that we have one of the most powerful members of Congress representing us when you just talk to everyday people. And our congressman is spending his time talking to CEOs of hospitals and of companies while I'm spending my time talking to employees and working people and just everyday residents of, of Holyoke and in other communities throughout our district. We've launched a six part town hall series in a number of cities throughout the district to hear firsthand from people. My campaign has made 30,000 wellness calls to people in the district just over the last four weeks alone. And again, the, the, the House, even with a Democratic majority, uh, signed off on an insane amount of money for corporate and special interests without any direct oversight. And we're already seeing millions of dollars go to friends of President Trump, private jet companies, uh, big corporate chains. Meanwhile, I'm talking to folks that don't have internet at home don't have broadband in their community, uh, can't find access to a, a medical professional, don't know how they're going to pay their rent um, in a couple of weeks. Those are the things that members of Congress should be focusing on. But I mean, if you're not interacting or talking to the people you represent, how would you know that? Yeah. And by the way, this is a quick aside. Th thank you for mentioning the fact that we, we sort of just take it for granted if you live in one of the big cities that, yeah, every American has access to Internet and probably high speed access. But that is definitely not the case. And uh, look, I live in L.A., so I have access to any number of different providers. I cannot imagine having gone through the past two months without that extra that layer of access to what's going on to like how how isolated you must feel. Um, if you don't have access to that. And and a lot of the people uh, in elected office just take it for granted that, that that's available. Yeah, absolutely. And then we expect kids and teachers uh, to have access to education online. I mean, we gave out 1,500 laptops to students in our public schools that didn't have devices at home. And we were able to provide six months of free internet. Um, the city was for any family that didn't have internet connection at home. And there are still dozens of cities and towns in the first district represented by Congressman Neal they don't have any connectivity to internet whatsoever. And so these are the challenges that, that people are faced with here in, in this district. And again, it's time we have a member of Congress that's gonna fight tooth and nail to bring resources back to the district to improve people's quality of life. He's the chair of the Ways and Means Committee. Massachusetts is getting, um, I think is ranked towards the bottom of all 50 states in terms of the money they're getting for, for hospitals. Here in Holyoke, we have one of the last community hospitals in the state, not qualifying for a lot of federal aid. And just last mm -hmm. week, our, our, our one psychiatric hospital here in, in Western Mass is laying off over 200 employees and closing psychiatric beds at a time where mental health services are more important now than ever before. And so tell me how your power is benefiting this district. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you're down to just the it's three more months of campaigning before the primary date. Yeah, about three and a half more months until September 1st. And where can people find out more about the race, but also about your platform and, and what you're doing uh, yeah. during the pandemic? Yeah, I would encourage people to, to go to alexmorseforcongress.com, uh, check out this race. We're in the final three and a half months. We're having one of our best uh, quarters of the campaign so far. We have a lot of momentum. Uh, really grateful to have the support of progressive organizations nationally, people from all 50 states. But we need to win this race on the ground. We're never going to have the millions of dollars Congressman Neal has from Wall Street, fossil fuel companies, and big pharma. Uh, but we're going to have the support of everyday people, working people across the country and here in Western Mass. And we're going to get this done on September 1st. Uh, Alex Morse, thank you once again for joining us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much, John. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.